David Brewster here, and you'll episode three for all. This is three Dimebag Daryl licks from 2004, and if you search around on my channel, you'll find an additional three for all from about three years ago for Dimebag, and also the Chords of Pantera uh, chord play episode. So we've talked about Dimebag before, but it's been a little while, and when I was putting the lessons and material together for this month, you know, for Metal Month in October, obviously I was listening to Voivod and Goblin and Metal Church and Sabbath and horror soundtracks and stuff. But for whatever reason, I found myself grabbing Pantera and listening to Pantera, too. And I had them on the list. I just couldn't really decide what I was going to do. I mean, Dimebag's always been on my list. But, uh, you know, it had been a while, honestly. I'd kind of given Pantera a break, and I hadn't listened to some of that music in a while. And revisiting it with, you know, seemingly fresh ears, it just blew my mind all over again. And I started thinking of his importance and influence and just his legacy. And definitely, there's only one Dimebag Daryl. Rest in peace, Dimebag. And there's really no question, Dimebag is sorely missed from the metal scene, for sure. I mean, as soon as he died, uh, there was this giant hole, you know, that was just kind of this void right there in metal. And it's never really been properly filled or replaced. I mean, there's only, like I said a minute ago, there's only one Dimebag Daryl. And I don't know if that hole will ever be replaced. But, you know, I've said this before, you know, about Stevie Ray Vaughan, and both Dimebag and Stevie Ray are from Texas. And Stevie Ray Vaughan was literally a walking encyclopedia of blues. All those licks and rhythms and riffs and all that stuff. You know, I mean, Albert King and Hendrix and people like that, but then just filtered through all these years and decades and decades of blues music. And it came right out of Stevie Ray Vaughan's guitar and his soul. And the same thing could be said about Dimebag. Obviously not blues, now we're talking about metal. But Dimebag Daryl really was a walking encyclopedia of metal. Obviously a heavy, you know, Van Halen influence and, you know, Ace Freely and people like that. But all these different bands, Slayer and Metallica and all this stuff appeared, you know, in his rhythm playing, his riffs, his solos and stuff like that. And he just took all that information and just, I mean, he shined like the sun. Another thing I wanted to add here is I was going through concert footage and bootlegs and I was listening to albums and stuff like that and just trying to decide what I was going to do. And I was looking through all this just candid, you know, video footage. And for those of you that aren't aware, you know, before we had Jackass, we had Pantera home videos, you know, and concert videos. Vulgar video and, and video from hell and some of those, Dime Vision. But uh, just some of the wild antics and just goofball stuff that Pantera used to do of course, Dimebag seemed like he was almost always like in the center of it. But I mean, he was shooting like uh, Roman candles in his house at people and bottle rockets. And they were, you know, just totally doing a bunch of jackass type stuff on the road or off road or in the hotel room or whatever. And here's a scene of him showing up in the crank, you know, amps uh, like headquarters or whatever. And he's rocking out. You know, I, this might be like the first time he actually plugged into a crank. I'm not really sure because he was super pumped. And he was laughing and stuff, just going crazy on the guitar. And then he went nuts with the bar and literally kicked on somebody's car alarm out in the parking lot. But check this out, it's hilarious. The licks in this lesson came from a Damage Plan concert in 2004 and I was not unable to find the location, so it didn't actually say where it was. And in 2004, that was the same year that Dimebag was unfortunately killed and murdered. And, you know, I thought about hitting some earlier stuff. I mean, of course, there's that famous, you know, teenage guitar solo. Like, he was like 17 or 18, you know, whipping out Van Halen and all that stuff. He might have been younger than that. I don't remember. But uh, I just locked onto this because this was kind of the end of Dimebag's life and his career. And where he was headed, you know, with Damage Plan. Of course, there was speculation about Pantera reforming and doing a reunion. So who really knows what Dimebag may have done if his life had continued? And unfortunately, it didn't. But I just kind of locked onto this, you know, concert footage and the solo that he played where I was like, man, that was the end right there. Okay, the first looks the sequenced A minor arpeggio idea. It's really cool. Something like this. <laughs> So 
basically playing an A minor arpeggio, and he's doing this really interesting kind of sequence. So he slides into this A note on the A string there on the 12th fret. And then slides into that A again and starts doing this. Starting that slide with my third finger, and then starting that little sequence here, that uh, A to that C back to that A, and then that uh, E, C, E, and then A, uh, E, A, and then you're going to grab this B, E, and then you're going to bend that B up a half step to C, release that bend, and then end on this G. So one more time right there. changes the end. Everything's the same. Right there, grab this E, go to A. You're going to grab this E again and bend that up a step and a half to G. You're going to bend that E to G. Like that. And then put those two halves together and you got lick one. Next up is an A blue scale speed lick, and it's really cool, something like this. So think A minor pentatonic with a flat five, and that's what we're playing with. That E flat right there. So we're starting right here, and he's basically doing you know multiple repeats or reps of this idea. So if you want to, you could basically just think of each you know uh, group of four as one, like this. So do it four times, but think of that as one you know cycle. So that's one, and then do it basically do six reps of that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then end on that A note right there. I think he's actually using the bar there at the end. But that's, you know, important, and you have to count. And I know a lot of guitarists I've worked with, you know, as students, they don't like counting. They don't like thinking. Um, they just want to, you know, do it like as easy as possible. But with that, that's the only way to actually, you know, properly play that phrase. You want to count and think, how many times am I playing this? Because you're just doing the same three notes over and over and over with that little pattern. Right? Now take that idea and let's move it in an octave. So let's go down an octave and do the same thing. It's going to be a little stretchier. Obviously, it's going to sound similar, but an octave lower. Like this. Right. Do it again. Go down another octave. Do it right here. And that's a great workout, especially for that third, you know, third finger and pinky, which it seems like a lot of players have trouble with that. But that's a great workout, great warm up, and also an attention letting, an attention getting lick. Next up is a descending arpeggio speed lick, and this is really cool. It kind of has this classical kind of flavor, like this. <laughs> Right 
they were basically doing this descending kind of triplet pull off. So we're pulling off, you know, between two notes on the D string and then a single fretted note on the A. And that's where we get that three note kind of triplet uh, sequence. So it starts off with an implied B diminished right here. And you notice that we do that four times. So one, two, three, four. Then you're going to move to A minor right here, and I'm counting five times right there. One, two, three, four, five. And then G major five times. Five. And then F major four times. One, two, three, four. E minor three times. One, two, three, four. Three times, and then C major four times, and then I just ended on an A uh, power chord right there. Dimebag kept going, but you can just kind of safely end up there on A or A5, and then slowly you can actually hear. is a stretch pentatonic speed lick from Dimebag and this is really cool and I actually saw multiple you know guitar solos like live guitar solos where he played different versions of the same lick and I also have a variation of my own of the same idea and I always wondered where I got the idea or the lick from I very well could have just you know pulled it from Dimebag Daryl and didn't realize it but uh, the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna play the clip first so you can actually hear Dimebag just whip this out it's very intense very fast but here's the clip of Dimebag's lick Okay, that's crazy. So let's take the same clip and we're going to slow it down considerably. That way you can actually hear and kind of see, even though it's a little grainy and fuzzy, but you can definitely hear what he's playing. So here's the same idea slowed down. So Dimebag stretch pentatonic speed licks way up here. You know, really interesting, and it's a, a definitely a handful too. So right there, we're starting way up here on this A note. So you're literally pulling off, you know, three notes there on the B string, that A, that G, back to that uh, that E note, and then you're going to reach over here and, and you're grabbing that D right there. It's three notes on the B pulled off, and an additional pick D right there on the G string. That's really, you know, really interesting. Also, it's kind of awkward. You know, it's not the most uh, comfortable lick at first. And then the variation that I mentioned earlier, I've played this lick for decades. I know I've had it, you know, under my fingers for a very long time. I never even really thought about where it came from or where, you know, the sound of it came from. It's just something I started doing. And I very well could have pulled this from Dimebag Daryl and didn't even realize it. But I've always played it like this. And I'm doing a finger roll there with my third finger. You know, a really cool, like, quick or fast, you know, four note sequence right there. The exact same thing that we catch Dimebag doing in this clip. Just, you know, arranged and fretted in a different way, like that. You know, really cool lick, and it totally grabs, you know, people's attention. Like, whoa, what was that when they hear it? All right, that's going to wrap this look at three Dimebag Daryl licks from 2004. And like I mentioned earlier, definitely Dimebag Daryl is sorely missed on the scene. Just his sense of humor and laughter and goofball antics, some of that jackass stuff I mentioned earlier. Not to mention, obviously, his guitar playing and music. I mean, I don't know. There's just that intensity and that energy, conviction and feel, and that really aggressive nature. I mean, everything he did was just kind of wild and aggressive, you know, whether it was the guitar or partying or whatever. 
um, a very intense person. But from what I understand, he was also a sweetheart, like just a giving, caring person, you know, really, really devoted and went out of his way for his fans. You know, and he was a fan himself. He would lose his mind, you know, meeting somebody like Kerry King or, you know, James Hetfield or whatever. I mean, he was definitely a fan of metal, you know, but he was also a metal guitar icon and legend at the same time, which is really cool. So anyway, rest in peace, dime bag, and leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to my lessons, and I'll be back before you know with more content and material. Thank you.